Hi everyone and warm welcome to our next Coder Summer of Sustainable Fintech Meetup Series tonight. My name is Leonard Lima. I'm one of the co-founders of Nextcoder. I'm very excited to have you all with us tonight. With me is Leslie Lee. Leslie, greetings to you. I'll hear from you in a second. But before we hand over to you, let me tell you a little bit about our Meetup Series and what we actually do at Nextcoder. So at Nextcoder, many of you know, we've done quite a few Meetups recently. We really want to bring together the latest technologies and see how they can solve some of the global grand challenges that we face on our planet. And in this context, we've also teamed up with Visa and Spiefel Digital Hub to create the FinTech for Impact Challenge. This is a platform that brings together impact-driven FinTech businesses with financial services organizations, with the communities to really have a platform to build financial services for a more sustainable future. When you think about finance, why does this matter and why does fintech need to be more sustainable? Think about all these problems that we have, whether that's poverty, climate change, pollution, hunger, sustainable cities. It all comes down to the millions and billions of daily decisions that people make all around the world. And with these decisions, finance is involved. So finance can be a source for good, can be a powerful tool, but can also be part of the problem. So it's not just about creating fancy fintech solutions, but really about impact-focused fintech solutions. And this is what the Meetup series is all about. So we have nine impact-driven ventures selected for you, and they will tell you about their approaches, what they actually do, how they collaborate with established players. And this will all lead to our product hack that will take place on September 4th, where we work together with some of the leading banks in Germany, with Visa, and with you guys out there to develop impactful fintech solutions. So are you ready to get started tonight? Leslie, I want to see a thumbs up because you will be the first in the row of presenters. So what will happen today? We have three impact ventures selected. You have five minutes time for a pitch, and then we have another 10 minutes Q&A. So for the Q&A, I might have to think about some good questions, but also you guys in the audience on the right-hand side, left-hand side in Slido, you will uh, have the opportunity to ask your questions for Leslie and the other teams. Um, that said, Leslie, five minutes pitch. If you're ready, you're with U-Impact, and I would say the stage is all yours. Good to have you with us. So over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Leslie. I'm the CEO of U-Impact. Let's get to that. There are 100 million millennials in Europe, but only, only, only over half of us invest. The young people, they actually want to invest, but a lot of them, they have no idea how to get started. The confusion, no time, no money. We talked to more than 50 millennials in the past four months. We started by just talking about money investment until at some point we hear more and more people telling us, you know what? I'm trapped in a home like in a cage. It's a crazy world out there. Natural disasters, social problems. I want more. I want to make a difference with my money. That got us thinking. What can we do to help you make the impact that you care about? How can we do the good in the world and make a good return? Sustainable investing is the answer. And that is how you impact was born. We're building a B2B2C sustainable investing platform that enables users to invest the right way, grow their wealth, make a positive impact. We're potentially unlocking sleeping savings into sustainable assets by offering them easy access to this investment market with a lower minimum investment threshold. There are 2.5 billion euros of German citizen savings that are currently either in cash or saving accounts. This is where the partnership with the financial institutions like banks, fund providers, they can come in in a very powerful way. The sustainable investment market is only around 5% of the total market in Germany and it's growing at record speed. They're growing, they're showing the high resilience throughout this pandemic period. Imagine we can unlock the sleeping savings into investing in a sustainable future. So we don't just wanna build another investment app. We're here to establish the emotional connection between people and the cold hard financial world. 
And, and it's not just money we're talking about. It's people's lives and their futures we're talking about. The connection then can then, can then only become from awareness. Impact comes from all around us. Environmental challenges such as clean energy, water shortages, and you'll see uh, social challenges such as gender equality, diversity, and inclusion, and technology innovations that enables all this impact to take place, such as digitalization and cybersecurity. We allow our users to visualize, to understand the impact they could be potentially creating by investing in these relevant funds. So why are we the best people to do this? We gather together as a team for one purpose, making a positive impact for the future. There is no plan B because there is no planet B. The past 10 years, I was working in investment banking in London, working for JP Morgan, Barclays, Mizuho. And last year, I quit my job to follow my true purpose. So then along the way, I have like-minded people join my journey. My CEO, Alistair, and I worked together in Barclays back in 2013. Um, the last project he managed was a Brexit project for UK's biggest bank. After 13 years working for investment banks like Goldman Sachs, Barclays, HSBC, earlier this year, he packed his bag and moved to Berlin. And he told me, Leslie, I'm joining you. We have a more important job to do. Our CTO Clemens and I, we met in 2006 for our industrial engineering degree from the University of Cambridge. He has 15 years in industry experience in technology and innovation management, and he strongly believes in tech for good. Our marketing expert, Maria, she joined us because she truly believes in the purpose we're working towards too. And with her over 10 years marketing experience, working with the well-known consumer companies such as Kayak and Nike. We believe having a group of talented people who are passionate about what we're building and a bit of craziness, we can go a very long way. We're looking for team members, corporate partners, and angel investors to join our journey. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Leslie, for the presentation. Um, that was pretty much on point with your five minutes. So we got that extra time also for our Q&A. So at this point in time, also to encourage everybody in the audience, please type in your questions. I want to learn more about your product. And I mean, you mentioned it before. It is about the awareness. Time is ripe that people want to do sustainable investments. How do you actually reach these people? How do you actually create this awareness? So what is it that you do on this end? So awareness comes in different areas. Just now we talked about it's not just the environment we're talking about. What is having more awareness now is the social. People are seeing this George Floyd uh, problem going on, gender equality. Um, believe it or not, gender equality is actually performing the lowest in Europe in such a developed economy. So start with the, uh, with the awareness on what is out there, what kind of impact people can, can create. And secondly, what's more important that we're not sacrificing returns. This is something coming at a very much of a surprise. When we talk to our users, people say, yes, of course we want to do good. You know what? We have our bills to pay. We also want to grow our, our returns with our savings. What we found out is that you really don't have to sacrifice that. So this is the two angles that we're starting with when it comes to the awareness, starting with the young people that most of my team are. And, and me, me as well. So yeah. Yay, I, I, on I, it. Here so, we go. I mean, follow up question there. So then you have created the awareness for the user. They come onto your platform. How does it actually work then? So what are the options that I can do with my money? And you mentioned it before, there's a tremendous amount of money in Germany, not used in a proper way. Um, what do I do then on the platform? So on a platform to start with, um, well, if we take a little step back, if you look at the best way to invest money is to diversify, is to focus on the long term, not to speculate, not to day trade. So what you can see on Robin Hood, for example, there is about 70% of the people losing money. All right. So we focus on funds, funds that are already diversified. 
and focus on the steam that people can um, use our product, visualize the kind of impact that they, they would like to, to participate. And at the same time, we we'll break down this complex terminologies, the jargons from the finance world, um, have the information that most relevant to them. So people can just have um, a couple of clicks and they can, they can buy the funds that they understand what exactly is signing up to. Mm -hmm. There's already a question coming up because you mentioned the impact and there's a question from Gibran and the first part is how do you measure the impact then of the investment? Super interesting. So that at the impact, um, um, so impact investing includes um, the sustainable investment and there are a whole spectrum. So you have the ESG, you have the impact side. The, the measurement is a huge issue in the whole industry. Um, a lot of banks, a lot of um, different financial institutions, they are offering those funds. This is where the problem is. And this is what we're trying to solve by bringing those products onto one platform. You don't have to compare Apple with oranges again. You can be um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a more standardized way, seeing the parameters on, out there. For example, if it's a gender um, equality fund, um, there will be, now we're seeing more standardized selection um, criteria, say, um, the, 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 the company the fund buys into should have, for example, 30% of the women on board be before um, it's included in the fund. So this are the kind of standardization we're trying to bring onto our platform from different providers. And there's even a second part of the question. So not only on the impact, but on the investment readiness of millennials. Uh, Gibran says, as you know, millennials might not be investment ready. So what are the amounts that they can invest in? Have you, do you have specific offerings for them? We're talking about 10 euros to start with. Okay. And what, what is most common? I mean, can you tell us about this? So 10 euros on a monthly basis, is that kind of the starting point or what do you see? So what we see from the interviews we engage with the investors, you can segregate them into different cohorts, different types of investors. The people already invested, we're talking about less than half of the millennials. So most of the millennials, they don't even have a depot. So they don't have an investment account. Um, what is blo blocking them? Two things, the investment threshold. Um, they would like to try it to get comfortable with it before they have um, more commitment with it. So, and the secondly is the simplicity. Um, having these two parts that build into our, our platform, this is what we're trying to offer to our, this part of the, this a group of people don't yet have the depot. And once they learn by doing, having the depot with small threshold to start with, this is when they can get more comfortable. This is when they have the learning, have the knowledge, increase their financial literacy. Then you go along um, having the monthly commitment, um, slowly getting this allocation of the funds, um, um, the, the amounts up. So this is the approach. Okay, great. So when you speak about long-term investments, what is, what is the long-term horizon then for you? Is it three years, five years, 15 years, or even longer? What's the period um, people usually take? So yes, three, five years, that's a average. However, when I talk about long-term, I'm talking about non-day trading. Um, the statistics you see, uh, people can see, um, I would like to call out whoever's listening now, if you're using say Robinhood or Trading212, those, those trading platforms, if you scroll down to the very bottom, um, they say the investors losing money on the CFDs, those, those complex products, they are about, 76 to 80 percent of the, the investors are losing money just don't do it if you do not have that um, understanding on the investment side this is what we're uh, talking about don't speculate <laughs> and if you, even if you have that understanding you probably better not do it if you lose uh, if so many people lose money on this um okay. you mentioned you, you talk about germany um when i looked at the team you of course have a strong uk background with cambridge and uh, all the uk banks where do you operate right now? What are your plans there? Our first market will be in Germany. So now all of the team were based in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, although we have a strong UK focus as in um, me and Alistair, we had our um, um, banking experience from London. However, that we've been operating around here, building our startup from Berlin since the beginning of the year where we joined um, the Porsche Digital Formation Program mm -hmm. um, from January to, to March. So yes, Germany will be our starting market. 
And, and we have a German team member, um, and we're all based in Berlin. And what's then the plan? Do you already have plans in mind that you can share with us? Um, the plan is at the moment we're building our MVP um, and we're building a community. We just started a, a meetup group on meetup it's called the Berlin Sustainable Investing uh, Impact Investing Group, um, where we're growing this community. As we were saying, what we're doing now is the awareness. The awareness is the, the key issue here. And I want to share a little bit of uh, statistics with you when it comes to German fintech. So in, 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 in aggregate, there are about 800 fintechs in Germany. Take a wild guess. What is the percentage of the fintechs actually are tackling the sustainable challenge? Wild guess. Two, per, two percent. You're, you're very pessimistic. So yeah. it's four to five percent. So the whole oh, Germany. Pretty much on point. On point. So if you look at the people, the, the people working in those startups, we're talking about one in a million. That is, that is, it's not nice if you are talking about you want to make a huge impact. You want everyone to be on a journey together. It's not enough. So coming back to the point, awareness is something we really want people to do. Even if people do not invest with us, we want people to start thinking about sustainable investing. And we want other fintechs to, to start getting their numbers up so it's not full 5% we're talking about. I, wanted to, I want to see 40, 50. This is why we're saying it's making impact investing the new normal. In the future, there will be no impact investing because all the investing will be from taking a sustainable point of view. So if you ask about plan, this is a very long-term plan on top of what we're doing now. Um, start from step one, building the MVP and the community. Great point. I mean, on the on the awareness part, we talk, uh, we speak with a lot of social impact-driven ventures in many different fields and awareness is always at the core. How do you potentially partner with different organizations? Because there are still others who have the same objectives. So how do you partner in that sense of awareness creation? And how do you generally approach partners in other parts? Where do you collaborate with partners from the traditional financial sector, with banks and so on? How does it look like? So if we look at the banks and financial institutions, the collaborations could be very powerful. We're talking about unlocking the sleeping savings. However, if you look at their business model, the way they operate, um, it's a lot more expensive than um, potentially than, than fintechs like us, what we could do. That's why they have a lot higher, say, thresholds, um, requirements, costs for, for, the, for the investors. However, to collaborate with us, we're creating an extra layer um, that we're facing the users who are not yet comfortable having um, much of their savings investing. So we're there to, if you like, a training ground to grow them to a, to a point that they can be, um, um, from a financial uh, uh, institutional point of view, later on when they're sophisticated enough, then they could be cross-selling, expanding their, um, their horizon to, to, to their more sophisticated needs. So that's one of the angles. Okay, Leslie, great. I think we're already coming to an end of our 15 minute slot. There are many more questions on the slide of things. So first of all, I would like to say thanks a lot, Leslie. Thanks to all of you for the questions for Leslie. Maybe what we do afterwards, when you hop over to Slido, you might be able to answer the one or the other question directly there and type the answers. I think this would be much appreciated. We'll so do that. Thanks a lot. And we go back to back to our second speaker. And I would like to welcome Naomi from Bill Les to join us here on our stage. Thanks, Leslie. And good Thank luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. And there is Naomi coming up. Naomi, hi. Good to, good to meet you. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> so same rules for you. Five minute pitch. And then we have probably 10 minutes for the Q&A. Are you ready to go? Yes. One moment. I share my screen. So, can you see everything? Yes, that works. So, okay. the stage is all yours. Perfect, thank you. So, um, from January 2020 on, there is a new rule coming into action. Each receipt at the cash point has to be printed. That means in reality that when you are a customer, the, the sales personnel just ask you, do you want a receipt? And then you have two options, no or yes. And if you say yes, 
you have the problem that all receipts you get, they are they are always lost when you need them. So if you have really expensive goods, like for example, a computer or for example, I don't know, a TV, um, you have the problem that every time you are looking for a receipt um, for guarantee reasons, you can't find it. And on the other hand, if you don't need a receipt, the new law says that the receipt has to be printed and it immediately gets into the trash. And that's of course not sustainable. And on the other hand, for example, if you think of a big supermarket in Germany, the one, the blue yellowish one, one, um, one of these shops prints 1 million um, receipts each year. And that means for them costs up to, up to 3000 euro. And if you use bill less, you have the opportunity to save up to 90% as you only pay around 300 euro. So I always talk about bill less. So what is our solution? First of all, our solution is confirmed um, is conforming the law. So um, we have um, the confirmation that everything works out with a new law. And there are three different options to do the receipt digitally. We decided to do the QR code um, solution. So we digitize the receipt by offering a QR code on a customer face display, as you can see in the middle. Additionally, um, the customer has the opportunity to take important receipts with them by scanning with the smartphone to, re to receive the receipt as a PDF. So that's of course a good solution for customers who need the receipt. And if you don't need the receipt, it, ha it doesn't have to be printed. That's the solution. And what is our USP is of course that um, we have a solution, we have a software and the app. So at the end, the whole ecosystem around the receipt can be shown by billers. And that's exactly what our app shows on the right hand. So important receipts can be scanned by the app, but you have to say our solution is only optional with the app. So you can also use only the QR code um, software solution um, to be conforming to the law. So coming back to our USP. Um, right now we are only focusing on the receipt transfer. Um, that means that we don't have um, a complete overview over all your expenses at the moment and stuff like that. So we think that partnerships in that point um, with, for example, banks um, can be really successful for us as um, all the diff different positions you have on a receipt um, can be used really good for further analysis and stuff like that. Additionally, of course, I already said before, um, we have an ecosystem around the receipt already covered. So it's not only sending out the receipt by the QR code, but it's also receiving the receipt. And we have the possibility to connect um, to any POS system as a module. So um, we have an API and it's, it's possible for them to implement the API. Um, and that's for a POS system. It's easier to buy a, a solution like Billers as to develop it by themselves. And of course we have attractive pricing because our pricing is between three and 12 euros. So if you think for example of the classic bakery around the corner, it's no more 16 euro each month to pay for receipts, receipts printing, but now it's only eight euro. That's actually the, the pricing we are talking about. So thanks for your attention. That's it. And I'm really looking forward to your questions. Thanks a lot, Naomi. Um, so again, also to encourage everybody to ask questions and write them in our Slido chat here. Um, you mentioned the three to 12 euros. So the companies, the POS, they have to pay for you. For the user, that's totally free. Is that correct? Um, for the end user, like for example, the consumer on the cash um, system, yes, it's free. Um, but the user, like for example, the retailer is the one who pays because um, the biggest benefit is on the retailer side. So the cash system is just the one who's like um, partnering up with us and making it possible on the IT side. And um, the retailer is our customer at the end. Okay, and you mentioned the, the yellow and blue supermarket. So they would basically pay for every store, is that correct? Or do they have like a flat fee at some point in time? Yeah, actually our pricing um, depends on uh, the licenses. So each cash system has its own pricing at the end. As um, uh, 
one cash system in a supermarket, for example, is always busy and the other one not. So there's a different range. Um, but with the blue yellow one um, supermarket in Germany, um, we have we have a, a price reduction up to 90 percent as um, we uh, we have the, a pricing based on one supermarket with five cash systems covering one million um, receipts each year. And you mentioned it basically works with any POS system. Is there any friction? Is there any effort to do on their side for the API integration? That was also one question that came here from the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, important question, of course. Yes, there is an effort to do um, as they have to implement the API um, on their own system. So they have to look that everything is shown, for example, on the um, on the on the tablet, on the display, for example. Um, they get like an API with SDK from us so they can implement with less effort. Um, at the end, it's something around um, we expect to have something around five with up to eight um, men working days. Um, to implement um, billers, um, but it depends on the on the individual needs of the customer. Okay, yeah, good to know. So, how far are you in your journey now? Um, where are you? Which stage? And what is next? Yeah. Um, so at the moment, we we started to get the first traction on the market. So of course, since January, um, we have a lot of um, emails coming in from potential customers who really need that solution. As of course, the whole media hype, um, yeah, emphasized our topic, of course. Um, and the traction we already reached um, is that we have um, one cash system partnering up with us. Um, which doesn't specify specify on a specific um, branch, but they are open for all, and they will do a, a pilot with us in September. And from September on, it's just one month um, piloting, and after that, um, we will go live with them. So that will be in in all the the German cash systems as well as um, internationally. And then we partnered up with an. Uh, and with an SAP um, consulting um, house um, from Switzerland, um, we have um, uh, we have a partnership with them. So they just um, they propose to their customers billers, and we do the implementation at the end. And additionally, we have a big um, German weight producer um, where we have a partnership, and we will do. Um, all the cash cash systems they they have um, with billers. That's okay. attractive. You, you mentioned before that you never find the important bills. I somehow can relate to this problem. I was wondering whether that is something that you would call Murphy's law. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> um, so I was wondering a little bit whether bill less from the user point of view is a critical mass system. Do does it really benefit me as a user if you only have a few customers, or does it need to have that critical mass to be beneficial? Mm -hmm. Um, actually, as I told you before, um, talking about the process, the app is not crucial for our business model. So, mm -hmm. of course, the app makes the possibility to have the whole ecosystem around the receipt, but it's not it's not where we generate our turnover. Sure. Um, so the critical mass, of course. If we if we have if we have difficulties finding retailers um, to persuade about our solution, of course, it's nice to have a, a critical mess. But at the moment, it's like I think it comes with the partnerships. You know, when we partner up with really like, for example, banks, you all, you have all the the customers, and if you have like a um, a cooperation with the blue yellowish one supermarket, um, I mean, they already have an app, so we just white label into their app and we can use their customers as our customer base. So that's how it works at the end. But that's an interesting point. I mean, does that mean that the benefits are bigger for the businesses and more important rather than for the user? Um, I think I think we have to we have to check that because at the moment we are right before our pilot. So we have to check out how big the how big the need is for a customer and also the um, the the um, the commitment of the customer to scan the receipt mm -hmm. as at the moment the benefit is especially on the retailer side to be sustainable and to have like yeah a better CS csr of course um and how how the the customer can benefit has to do with the the pace at the at the cash system you know and that comes with that 
Yeah, I think it's interesting because my first thought was really like the most important impact that you create is for the user, but maybe that's not even the case. So uh, as you said, but then it's driven by regulation because companies and Absolutely. businesses need to comply with regulation and that's why your solution then comes in. Absolutely. You mentioned the partnerships with banks and there's also a question here on the, on the Q&A, which companies would you like to cooperate with? Is there a way for collaboration? Is that interesting for banks? And you mentioned it a little bit already about the mm -hmm. data that potentially might be interesting. So what's your, what's your approach there? Yeah, that's right. So um, since we started with Billis, we got um, a few a few emails about uh, from banks um, talking about especially that issue because the whole media um, hype um, made this made this issue really an issue. I mean, talking about the bakeries printing without need, everything and everyone understands that. So the banks are also see something like also see something like a, a, po a possibility to cooperate. But at the moment, banks are still like really, uh, um, they think it's uh, at the moment, they are scared of the solution and they don't know really how to implement that. And um, that was our um, experience before um, because they just want to see how the market reacts to our solution at the moment. Um, and if you are asking what kind of partners we think are the perfect ones, um, I think at the moment it's it doesn't matter as we just have to to look how an MVP can look like, and we can of course think of an uh, of a possibility to to have overview um, position wise over all your expenses of course, and the data can be uh, can be important if you talk about an uh, anonymous data data, and where you can see how the customer behavior works. Mm -hmm. yeah, there were questions that go in this direction. What is the info that is contained in this digital receipt? Can it be enriched with other meta metadata and so on? So what are your plans there? Mm -hmm. um, so right now, um, German, uh, German cash providers are working on a standardized format for receipts. So all the standardized um, data is at the moment the ones that ha you have on the paper receipt right now. So like, for example, the positions, all the all the text data and stuff like that. And there's the possibility in the existing format to have optional um, text. So you can enrich that data with more. Mm -hmm. So we spoke a little bit about your next steps, your plans. So maybe you tell us a little bit also about your team and how you're set up as a company and what your needs are, what you're looking for. I think this would be also a good opportunity now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we are a team of three persons. It's Katrin, Simon and Mina Umi. Um, we are just, um, we just finished our studies, so we are really young. Um, we are both uh, 24 and Simon is 26. And I think that's also something um, that's our benefit. So we are really young and we are really open for our partnerships as we think that we can't know everything at the moment. We don't have those big expertise in banking and stuff like that at the moment. Um, and we have a background, for example, Simon has a background um, at the um, in Reutlingen in Baden-Württemberg. So he studied IT um, Katrin is coming from finance um, sector. So um, she was uh, she learned as a finance assistant at the um, LBWW in Stuttgart. And I have background in retail. So I learned a um, retail assistant and I, I understand the retail market really well. Um, and that's the combination of us three too. Um, we all gained around two years working experience in different fields. Katrin, for example, um, in finance furthermore, and me it was in consulting, in consulting of um, digital products and automotive, and in the next time also banks. So um, that's our little working experience we had. Um, but I think our team is, is a great team because we have the power behind us and um, we, uh, yeah, we have a lot of synergies in our team and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and what so we're looking you. for was the next question, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, we are actually looking for partners, of course, in, uh, in payment and in banks um, sector. And additionally, we also think that loyalty programs would be a nice thing um, to cooperate with. As I already told before, we are pretty open for partnerships as we think that there's a lot of potential around business model and we can make a lot of out of it. And um, you just have to see how it, it looks out, looks um, concrete. So um, with banks, we are already working 
on some MVPs or we are looking on how an MVP can look like, um, but we are open for further info, um, for further opportunities. That would be our, our one ask. And the other one, we are also looking for business um, investor, business angels as we are um, preparing our pre-seed um, yeah, financial round at the moment. So that's what we are looking for. And of course, networking partners. Okay, great. So I hope uh, many of the audience, uh, people in the audience can help you probably with one or the other challenge. Naomi, thanks a lot. Good luck with the less and uh, we'll also see you at the product hack soon. So thank you. With this, I would like to hand over to our next speaker, Matthias from Payactive. So Matthias should be joining us in a second and will tell us about his solution. Matthias, are you with us? Not yet. He's probably coming. There he is. Hi, Matthias. Hi. So one moment. Now, can you see me and hear me? I can see you and I can hear you. Yes. Fine. So. So same rules for you. Good to have you with us. Five minutes pitch and then we go into the Q&A of around about 10 minutes. So if you're ready, just let me know and then the stage is all yours. So thank you for the introduction, Leo, and for having me here today. Um, I'm Matthias, payment expert and one of the founders of Payactive. Before I tell you more about Payactive, I have a little surprise for you today. Um, our new brand, new logo. Payactive is a tech-driven company which will provide the best payment service for corporates outside of the e-commerce with a deeply purpose-driven mission. But back to the current status quo of corporate payments. We talked to a lot of companies outside of the e-commerce sector. And our result was corporate payment is frustrating and customer unfriendly today. Please welcome Tina. Tina has more and more subscription and pay-per-use contracts. Sometimes there is a short-term liquidity bottleneck on Tina's current account. And that's not just annoying for Tina, indeed also for companies. Because today they don't have enough information on what's happened with the process. One solution today is to send Tina a letter requesting to transfer the outstanding amount plus a delay charge. But Tina, she thinks that's very uncool and frustrating. And if Tina makes a mistake during the transfer because she's frustrated from the process, the company won't even know from who the payments come from. The company we asked mentioned that around 20% of all invoices were late between 8 and 10% of direct debit was returned from the bank. And on average, the external and internal process costs, including staff costs, are around 13 euros per late payment. And our thought was, wow, that's quite expensive for a bad customer experience. There are two key factors to solve these problems. Customer onboarding, smart payment and late payment management, and last but not least, a positive customer interaction. With the service of Payactive, Tina will be able to sign contracts via her bank account. We are able to validate her bank data, bank details easily and direct for our clients. We can use transaction data to reduce direct debit returns and thereby save cost for our clients and also for Tina. And bill payers will faster build their billing over a full digitized payment process. And if there's a delay in the payment, our system will be automatically notifies Tina and offers her the customer friendly and individual best solution for her individual case. And last but not least, we will turn the payment process to positive customer in action by donating with every transaction to projects which help us to reach the sustainable development goals till 2030, decided from Tina. All these four key factors are offered by us in one single solution for frictionless payment experience. Payactive will be the digital enabler for corporates with the power of the European banking marketing market. By using PSD2, Abex, and other fintech services to provide the best service for the European market outside of the e-commerce. Company will pay us for successful transactions. And from each transaction, we donate a part 
to the SDG project, which are important for Tina. And we call these donations social cashback. Tina can decide where the money goes and she's grateful her company for the social cashback. And what's about us? We will find it through social cashback the biggest challenges we have in the next quite years. Example given, we will provide one year clean water for almost 400 million people and plant almost 400,000 trees in Germany and a lot more good things. At the moment, we are a team of experts from sustainability, digital solutions and payment with deep experience in the sectors. We are, so sorry. <laughs> We are supported by different accelerator programs, Microsoft and some more companies so far. I'm now ready for your questions and please feel free to contact me after the event for more t details how you can partnership with PayActive for a sustainable payment future. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Matthias, for the presentation. Um, so I will we'll start with the questions and again for the audience, make sure that you ask questions as well to Matthias. How far are you now in the process? Where where are you with PayActive right now? And yeah. What are the next plans? Yeah, we still found a company in uh, April. We are still on the way to the um, yeah, German Handelsregister, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we are we are have our first solution, Paperless. That's our first product, the digital billing thing. Um, we are still in the in the test system. We are testing the whole process with a quite big user um, base and also um, providing the service to the first companies um, in Q4 this year. Um, and also we are in contract with some companies. We have uh, LOEs uh, closed with them to provide the first first solution um, from Payactive. Um, actually, we are uh, bootstrapped right now and uh, we are still on the, on the discussion with investors to raise the, the first funding round um, to, to make PayActive uh, happen in the, yeah, in, the, in the production environment because we have some regulations, we have to fill out some forms and so on. Yeah, that's the, that's the current state of. Speaking about regulations, we could tell yeah. from, from your slides, you're focusing on, on Germany right now. So this will be your first market or do you already plan to roll this out in other countries? Yeah. So because PSD2, that's uh, the open banking, all, yeah, one part is the open banking platform for Europe. That's the reason why we say we are focusing on Europe. Also, the EBIC standard is quite yeah, uh, similar or quite standard in, in the German market, but also in the European market. Um, and that's why we are focusing on Europe. But at the moment, we are still only on the German market and also speak to some um, Austria companies because the, the market is um, yeah, similar, the language is similar. Um, yeah, but at the, at the moment we are still focusing on Germany. And you showed on one slide the different partners, so the banks, different companies, the social sector, the NGOs, how far are you? I mean, you mentioned the LOEs. Are you already in collaboration and talks with specific banks? I mean, you don't need to disclose any confidential information here. Yeah, it would be good to get some some impressions. Yeah, we are convinced that we, as the European payment payment market, will only remain relevant through corporations. That's our our also our thinking because we have to cooperate with with banks and also with other players in the market. We see PayActive as a digital enabler for companies to provide them better payment service, but we are will still have good solutions to build good solutions faster, but at the same time, we want to be able to exit the European banking market by cooperation with banks and other stay stakeholders in the market. Um, we are we are in, in talks, in the first talks with some banks and also with other partners of the, of the payment sectors. Um, and yeah, but I can reasonably not say the names of the banks because we are on an NDA. No, of course. One thing that was missing, though, maybe in terms of partnerships, what about other fintech for impact organizations, businesses? So you mentioned, you just mentioned that you're bootstrapping. And I mean, all of the others that we have heard, uh, Leslie and Naomi, they're all at the beginning, more or less. Um, they probably need tremendous amounts of resources. Have you thought about collaborations in this way on the technology end, maybe on, on processes, on, on other business areas? Yeah, for sure. We are also also speaking with, yeah, 
saying not purpose-based fintechs, but also with, with fintechs because we're thinking the, the market will change in the next quite years and we have banks and fintechs have to be to cooperate with each other. But also we, we think in cooperation with purpose-based fintechs and also with purpose-based companies like Better Place, Start Next, and all these companies which have the, the huge opportunity to have a lot of projects will, which will be, um, yeah, reach the SDGs because in the SDGs we have a, a, a huge amount of money that's missing to 2030. And we decide to, if we make a, a company or if we start a company, we will have a, an impact for society and not only to make money and a better solution. And that's the reason why we often um, yeah, talk with others, um, how we can cooperate, how we can cooperate with the with the impact and with the measurement of projects. How can we measure the impact of, of projects, which are, is a good project, why some projects are not good projects. So we are very open-minded to have discussions with each in the sector because we think, um, yeah, purpose have to be the, the future of also the, the financial market. But would that collaboration also come from a tech point of view where you could just create synergies? Have you thought about this? I mean, developing these solutions is quite expensive, quite costly yeah. not because of regulations, but all the tech work that you need to do on front and the back end. Yeah, Have you yeah for, for sure. We are um, actually, we are um, in partnership with some fintechs, which can also provide us the Bafin license at the moment. And so we can do the PSD2 model with all this, with, yeah, with this FinTechs. So we are, we are open-minded to talk with each, um, how we can cooperate with each other. Um, our opportunity is that we want to, to take our profits for doing something better in the world. And um, if there's enough money to finance ourselves, to finance our company and donate the other part to the projects, which will be have a huge impact for our world, um, and also maybe there's other partner who get something of the of the revenue from out. Um, it's all fine for us because we decided to finance this good project and not to make us rich with the with the startup. Yeah, when you just spoke about donating, maybe that's also where we can close the loop. So uh, think about partnering with U Impact. So we just heard Leslie. I mean, yes. let's think about different ways of even not just donating the money, but even investing it and making it more sustainable. I think yes. it could be a nice opportunity as well. For, for sure. The first part is because it's very easy to do donate money for projects. And there are also a lot of, of yeah projects they need money to do a good job maybe to plant trees or to bring in clean water like river con aqua to people they need clean water the easiest way is to donate the money and the the second thing is how we can um, reach the sdgs is to finance the right things and that's that's the solution how we can build also with you impact or with tomorrow on or other sustainable banks what will we finance for the future and how can we spend a lot of money in these projects to finance the right things for the for the next next years? Yeah, absolutely. So we speak about the next year. So what, what are your plans also in terms of team? We saw your, your team, as you said, you're bootstrapping. So what are your plans there? What are you looking for? Where do you yeah. need support? Yeah, actually, we are um, now in the first funding round. So we we looking for investors. We have, to, uh, yeah, we had a lot of, of um, discussions also with investors and uh, good talks. So we are we are looking forward to close uh, first round the next month, and um, also to to become some stuff in the company that we are um, accelerate our our program that we accelerate our products um, to bring it to the market. Uh, we have a deep partnership with uh, accelerators like Startplatz, like um, Impact factory and we are looking for more partnerships also with banks to get in, in discussions with bank because we have a huge opportunity how we can banks or bring banks back to the to the payment sector and um yeah the, the payment is one of the of the cash cash in market for banks because the yeah the sin situation is uh, like shitty in germany or in in complete europe 
So if anybody in the audience wonders what the sin situation is, that yeah. is true, so the interest rates are low, right? Yeah. So not much money that we can make on our capital right now. Uh, Matthias, thanks a lot for this. We're already coming to an end of the presentation part. So we're looking forward to seeing you as well soon at the product hack and good luck uh, with PayActive. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So everyone, as I said, this is kind of the end of our first meetup. So what is next? Uh, I mentioned it before, we have our product hack coming up on September 4 together with Visa and some of the leading banks in Germany. So we all invite you to join forces together with us with our nine impact driven ventures. We have our next meetup coming up August 4. So Tuesday in a week, same time, same place, 5 p.m. CEST, German time. Uh, one hour where you're going to meet the next three impact driven ventures. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to uh, thank all of our presenters today. Leslie, Naomi and Matthias. I would like to thank our media partner, Finance Forward and Tech and Nature. Of course, our partners, Spiefer Digital Hub. Usually we're in the Spiefer Digital Hub in Berlin, but we all take it virtual. And uh, Visa, I uh, would like to thank all of you for joining. Big thanks to the next Coder team. So that was a big round of thank you. And I get another thank you from Jonathan, if I, our co-founder, if I mentioned that we at Next Coder are looking for a full stack developer as well. So we're growing our team. So if you are a developer, head over to our website, nextcoder.org. Other than that, I wish you a great summer evening. Uh, I hope in Berlin, the weather is nice. I hope wherever you are, the weather is nice. In Munich, it starts to rain but we still have a summer of sustainable fintech coming along. And I'll see you all next week on Tuesday. Thanks a lot. Goodbye and see you soon.